Hey, what's going on everybody? Ollie from Flight Comp and I have uh, some new product news. Um, I have a new F, uh, F3K model here on the bench and I've been waiting for this thing for almost two years now. I'll give you a look at it here. It is the FX F3K. Um, it's made by GCM in Poland. Same guys that make the Vertigo F5J and also the Fireblade F3K. And this thing was designed as sort of a uh, like joint effort between a couple of people. And it didn't really go into production at all because the molds were kind of split up between a few different parties. And it was sort of in limbo for a while. Finally, GCM has got all the molds and they're starting to produce these things and I'm really excited to have a few here and I'm just gonna give you a quick look at all the parts and some of the features um, but right off the bat you can see that it's a low wing design and it's actually got a, a two-piece wing so it's easy to transport you can see right here it's got four bolts holding the uh, wing halves together so I'll take this apart and we'll take a closer look at all the parts and what comes with the model. These are sort of uh, pre-production and I just say that not in the layup or construction at all but uh, maybe in the little accessories that might come with it or a, a few uh, layout details on the servos and things. So some details might change slightly but nevertheless we'll take a closer look. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the wings. Uh, as I said before, it's a two-piece wing design. Low wing model. Solid core, uh, you know, standard construction for F3K, solid core row cell. Carbon skin, these come out of aluminum molds. I actually helped kind of polish these molds when I was in Poland. And at the tip here, uh, we have the cutout for the uh, throw peg already done from you, uh, for you from the factory and I hope that the uh, later production models will also have that as a standard feature and again we have the two bolts on each half of the wing to hold the wing wings together and then we have a carbon joiner Let's see if I can pull this out here we go Lightweight carbon joiner. It is foam filled, so it's not solid carbon, but it feels pretty stout and robust. And on both wing halves, we have the uh, slots for the aileron horns have actually been machined in, so that's already done for you. And they're quite accurate because I think they were probably done on a CNC machine. And uh, you can see the the gap here for the ailerons. Plenty of up throw. And there's a little divot here which matches a portion of the fuselage to help with the alignment. And on the bottom, not much to see. We have some countersunk holes for the, uh, I think they're three millimeter screws, metal screws, steel screws that hold the wings together. There you go. Pretty good finish on these. Um, again, these are out of uh, aluminum molds, and GCM really has their technique down with making solid core parts and producing a nice finish. We have some like a a hex pattern here, which you see on uh, pretty common on some models. I, I like the paint job; it's pretty nice. Here's the other wing, exact same thing. Not much difference. hinge line there and then uh, let's take a look at the fuselage again this is a low wing so the saddle is on the bottom of the fuselage here and we have some uh, interesting detail where the wing mates to the fuselage we have this sort of bulb here or uh, I don't know what you call that like a mating feature and you can see kinda how the trailing edge looks Slip-on nose cone, 
and I'll take that off in a minute. And then back here we have a uh, top mounted pylon for the elevator and it's got uh, threaded inserts there for the screws that hold down the elevator and it's got an interesting um, mating area on the back where the vertical stabilizer goes. The uh, vertical stabilizer actually slides inside the boom and obviously you see the notches there for the, uh, the rudder. There's still a little bit of play in here so when you glue the rudder on you will want to do the upside down technique on the workbench with a square just to make sure your vertical is square to your wings. Alright, underneath the uh, the slip-on nose cone, we took it off. Um, not much going on here. There is a flat, um, looks like it's fiberglass uh, plate that has been bonded into the, the fuselage. And I think that's just there to give you a level surface to mount your servos. This is sort of a 3D printed bulkhead. And it's got some holes to pass wires through and this metal pin, which is for the ballast system. Um, again, this is uh, so new to me. There's not really instructions out there. Um, hopefully soon we'll get uh, some some uh, build videos going and maybe uh, some kind of online instructional PDF. But I'm assuming that you're going to stack four servos in this area here you know, flat mounted, and then your receiver and battery would go over here in the front portion. There should be plenty of room in here for the servos. There we go. And let's take a look at the ballast, which is pretty neat, actually. So this is what came with these models. This is a uh, fiberglass stick, which has been machined. There is some weight already... Uh, attached to it and then it's got this sort of 3D printed flexible deal on here stuck on here I think it's glued at the front and I think this just uh, helps it retain in the fuselage and keep it from wiggling around but we'll uh, we'll stick it in and see how it goes so just go in like this and then I can feel that that 3D printed piece is definitely putting some tension on the stick and we'll just slide it in and lock it down into one of these holes and then if I try to shake it it doesn't really move around at all so pretty neat um, a pretty a quick way to do your ballast uh, I only got two sticks with the with each kit or I, mean, I should say one stick per kit and it had the weight already attached on it I would imagine you could get uh, some more sticks and uh, put some different weights on there so you can vary up your your ballast for whatever the conditions are But yeah, there's the uh, ballast stick, which I like a lot All right the tails You know very standard um, they look like any other DLG tails Interesting there's a bit of pylon on the elevator That's kind of interesting um, holes are pre-done for you. The finish is very good. And they come with the springs pre-installed. So I'm hoping that the uh, springs will come installed on all the future kits too. That's a really nice feature. And the uh, vertical, again, same thing. Springs are pre-installed. And here's the, uh, the bit that would stick into the back of the fuselage that you would uh, bond to the fuselage and I'll test fit this and show you show you guys how it looks and then we'll weigh all these parts at the end and I'll give you weights on everything here uh, so let's look at the uh, accessories that come or the uh, hardware pack that comes with the, the model hardware pack let's take a look at the hardware that comes with the uh, FX kit uh, the ballast obviously we talked about that before um, we got the carbon joiner here. We have four steel screws to retain the wings together and to hold them onto the fuselage. Then we have two small nylon bolts here for the 
horizontal stabilizer, two aileron horns. These are machine fiberglass aileron horns. And again, the wing is, the slots in the wing are pre-cut to accept these horns. And then we have the elevator horn here and the rudder horn. These are um, the aileron push rods. So this thing uses some long push rods that go from the nose and you'll have to cut some slots in the fuselage where they where they will exit and make L bends that will hook up to the horns, um, which will actually make uh, assembling the model pretty easy because you can just slide the wing on and uh, push the uh, L bends onto the horns. And then two bits of uh, plastic tubing here. Um, these would probably glue into the slots that you cut out of the fuselage for the exits for the push rods, I think. And then we have some uh, stainless steel metal tubing here, which you would use as crimps um, when you set up your uh, pull cables for your rudder and elevator. This is steel wire for the pull cables. And then they also include some uh, shrink wrap. And what you would do is cut this up into pieces and put it on your servos. Uh, shrink this down over your servos sand the shrink wrap a little bit and then glue your servos um, into the um, fuselage and then obviously we have a uh, throw peg here carbon throw peg which is pretty nice very well made and I will see if this uh, goes into the wingtip easily so uh, what I'll do now is just assemble the model slightly. I'll put the wing back on the fuselage and put the tails on. And I'll try to put this peg in here and see if that goes in without any fuss. Tails on, it went together uh, very easily, no issues at all. Um, again, we've got the nylon bolts here. And we got the vertical here. And it's kind of dark, but you can see that um, the fit here is very good, so there was no sanding or fudging or anything required. Um, there is a little bit of slack in this, side to side, so again, you will have to make sure it's square before you glue that on. Uh, let's see if we can look underneath here somehow. There we go. There's the pod there for the elevator. And then... What I wanted to do is just see if I could fit a horn in. So let me try to just put a horn in by hand and see if it fits or if it needs any adjustments. All right, well, the horn went right in. Um, so a very cool feature there, just a little bit less work for you to do. And again, you're going to have to cut an exit somewhere along here for the push rod. Um, next thing I want to do is see if the throw peg goes in the wingtip. And it basically just slid right in. So again, just a, a neat feature that you don't have to mess with. Um, I would scuff up that uh, throw peg before you glue it in there, um, but that's really neat. I have been told that the slots for the push rod exits will be cut on future models. I hope that's the case, because if, that, if that's done, it really takes a lot of the work out of the airplane. Um, just some rudimentary covers that come with it, uh, you know, for the tail. They don't have Velcro or anything. Um, it's better than nothing. Better c covers might come later uh, because I know there's a guy. They have a guy that makes really nice covers for them for their uh, F5J model. So maybe these are just a stopgap right now. But they are included, so that is a nice feature. Overall, that's pretty much it. I just got two of them. I only have two. Um, I got this one, and I'll show you this guy real quick. I have a blue one. Let's see here. The camera makes it look uh, lighter than it is. It's more of a darker blue. But the blue and the pink, uh, that's all I have right now. I'm hoping to get uh, kind of a steady stream of these trickling in soon. Um, very tempted to build one of these and fly it, but, you know, 
times have been kind of rough and I need to pay bills so I'm just gonna go ahead and put both of these up on the site for sale these are the first two that have ever made it into the states so if any of you guys out there watch this you know at the time I post it both of these models uh, will be on the website for sale so you can grab one and be one of the first people to uh, fly one of these guys and really uh, you know not too many people have flown this model uh, probably only a handful of people in Europe have flown it um, so yeah check out uh, flightcomp.com and I'll put the link in the description below directly to the airplanes um, I think if I can get some more in the second batch maybe uh, four or five models then I'll uh, build one and do I'll start doing a um, build series so we can really go through each step and uh, at least you guys can have a kind of an instruction manual um, in a video format and uh, I can go back and forth with GCM on the uh, the uh, build so I can get the, the proper um, technique that, that they call for uh, the last thing I want to do is just weigh all the parts and uh, just so you guys know, you know, you'll have a ballpark idea of how much the flying weight of the model might be. So I'll take everything apart again, and we'll get weights on everything, and that'll that'll just about wrap it up. All right, gang, let's uh, weigh up some of these parts and see what we get. I actually haven't um, weighed any of these before, so it'll be uh, pretty interesting. We'll start with the left wing panel. Put this on the scale, and we got 52 grams. So we'll just write that in here. 52. And we'll go for the right wing panel. 51. Pretty close to being even. And for the fuselage here put this guy on the scale we have 43 grams on the fuselage so we'll write that right here and next thing we'll grab a rudder see what that's like and remember the springs are in here too so between six and seven grams, we'll just call it six grams. Now the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Six grams on that. And can't forget about the wing joiner. Put that on the scale here and two grams not that I have the most accurate scale in the world but it'll give us a good ballpark so we'll add these guys up right so we have a total of the components at 160 grams or 5.6 ounces so I think these are uh, pretty competitive weights and um, I think this is a standard layup I don't think it's a super light layup and it's definitely not a uh, a windy or a strong layup. All right, really quickly, I put some X08N servos in here just to see what the room or spacing would be like. And I got three in here. Um, the the third one back here is kind of hidden un under the uh, shoulder here a little bit. I think you could still get these in here and be able to hook up uh, a linkage to that guy. And then I have the fourth servo in the front of this bulkhead here. And you can see the amount of room left. I think that's plenty of room to get a very small receiver and a like a single cell battery in there. Um, the other option would be to maybe put like a two and two arrangement. And again, I'm not sure how this is supposed to go, but I will try to get more detail on this as soon as I can. So you could probably also put, you know, two servos in the front and possibly get everything to fit. Depending on how big your receiver is, you have an option of maybe putting your receiver back here 
or maybe even above the servos and your battery up here. But uh, in any case, I think, you know, obviously there is a way to get all these servos in. I'll just have to figure out what is called for by uh, GCM. All right, so that was just a, a very uh, quick cursory look at the FX. Um, I filmed some of this uh, last night, so it was kind of dark, but I'll just kind of quickly show all the parts again uh, now that it's the daytime. Here's the fuselage, and we have the wings here. Again, two-piece wings, sort of a high, you know, modern high aspect ratio design. This is a low wing model. Tails, here's the uh, front of the vertical where it plugs in to the fuselage. Elevator. Again, the springs are already installed in the tails. Joiner. Foam core uh, carbon joiner. And then the other neat item here is the um, ba ballast stick with this 3D printed sort of uh, tension device on it. Um, I know that I didn't really, you know, give you much technical detail on this as far as the design parameters and aerodynamics and of course any of the flight performance, but really I don't have any of that information. So I just wanted to get a quick video up and kind of introduce the model to you guys. And I'm hoping in the coming weeks we'll be doing a lot, a lot more on this, and we'll have more info for you. Um, look, look to, uh, to the website flightcomp.com um, in the next day or two, and I should have at least two models up on the site with uh, pictures and some detail. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this this video on the FX, the new F3K model from GCM in Poland, and I will see you all in the next one.